Hey, Mods One Type okay. Um just bringing you a simple quick preview of um how we use the EU INT eight six six plus um rebalancing station. Now I'm joining here with an Xbox three sixty Jasper. So here okay, how it start off. Okay. Right now it's currently on. Um this here is the thermal coupler temperature as hundred and seventy eight. Here is the preheater, which is 268. This is my profile. Profile that varies differently. And uh, the top part here, that is the top heater, right? So as you can see, when I'm as I'm going through right here, and I'm shining the light, I don't know if you'll see, we get a little blurry. So far, it's bubbling. Um, if I take, there's a down screwdriver. Uh, whatever. Driver around here somewhere. Whatever it is. Wow, well, here we go. Alright. Now, if I take the screwdriver now and I actually do this, it's as you can see, it's not moving because it's stiff. That's so hot. So as you can see the coupler is two twenty eight. Sorry, two thirteen. It fluctuates because of the, the air pressure. Let's try to turn it up. Now, it all varies, you know, it all varies. Um, lead free soda melts at 220 degrees, and lead melts at 190. But for like lead, I do 210 for proper flow, and lead free, I do a 265 for proper liquidization of the chip. But you do not want to put too much heat on BGA chips, especially with this machine here. Because what happens is that hot air tends to popcorn your device, or popcorns the chip, right? So I have my soda pick right here, on standby, and my um, aluminum heat thing from an Xbox 360. This is completely cool, so basically when I put the chip on the heat sink, this heat sink sort of draws the heat out of it and cools it down in no time, okay? So let me take the pick again, which is my basically a flathead so then uh, flathead uh, thing. Take a look. Let me see. No. Still in solid state. Yeah. So we just had a wait. That's the temperature of the chip right now. It's at 252 degrees. So as you can see, the thermocoupler is almost touching the chip. That's a good sign when it's starting to touch the chip. Make sure this thing functioning. So let's turn up the temperature up some more. This is 188. Now, the only thing about this thermocoupler here, uh, not all the time it is be accurate. So, why does you? Why does average? It's a, no, you know, sort of melts at 260, lead free. But the chip temperature is 260, as you can see, fluctuates. So, what I just say, once I say 250, I, for example, I do that there, it, for me, I will say, okay, 250, sort of still um, hard, 267 target temperature. That's how I just actually observe it. It's all about trial and error. Not all the time you could actually get a perfect reflow with um, these things. So I decided to by look of feel and touch. So right now it's still hard. Yeah, it's still hard. Oh, that hurts. Right. Alright, so. Put a little flashlight on in here. So as you can see, it's still trying to liquefy. One time on Microsoft, they made a really good um, board. Mm -hmm. Right.
So the thing is, you keep the heater on all the time, for maximum flow. Right? You know the temperature is at 188, so we're going to turn it up again. It's too much. 200. And now we're going to wait for this to reach to 220. <clears throat> Almost there. That's observing how the flux behaves. Once you see no flux in there, it's starting to work really well. Still hard. <coughs> Sorry, I already flew. Yeah, it's still hard. Right? <coughs> it's at 209 right now. The temperature is dropping. We could have uh, adjust the air pressure some more. Yeah. Now, one thing about this particular device is that it, you know, it heat takes a little while. You know, different uh, according to your country, you know, reflow temperatures vary from, you know. Um, if in cold, if in a cold country, heat will build in no time. If it's in a hot country, it'll take a while. Um, especially when you have a fluctuated cool air passing through your your shop. That's why I close the window on mine because it's right next to the window. That window have a lot of um, cool air to be coming in, so you don't really want that to be attacking your chip, you know, as much. Uh, right now, I'm reading the temperatures at 220. And dropping and then raising and dropping and raising. That's the only downfall about um, the thermocoupler on the AUs. It's not um, accurate, you know. So all I just is average. But I know when it's on limit to stop the processing. Um, how the said device is supposed to work. So that's why I just take a look at the underneath part of the said chip. But, as I said, you know, chips have a limit. You're not supposed to exceed 265 plus. You're not supposed to exceed that or your popcorn chip. And the board not supposed to handle no more than 220. The reason why I have it at 268 is because of the height of the stiffener, the board stiffening jig. If it was low, like, uh, like literally touching the, the device itself, we had to do it low because you know that's a big, big concentration of heat. So let me get back to the reborn and everything. So far, one side has get shiny. Take a look in here. Yeah, here we go. The liquefaction. Okay. I'm gonna poke with it. Take a look, and you'll see. Yeah, we got liquefaction. So we'll just jack it up to about 220. Light hole. How to tell when it's so it's good? Let me the focus. Want to see those beads start to get shiny? It's in liquid state. But not fully liquid state. It's more in a, what you call a softened state. So I just keep on poking until I see satisfaction. Right. Good. Now, to remove now, I'm just gonna. Yes, so hold on. Let me just lift this up, okay? Okay. So now we take quickly. Voila. Then we put it right on here. That's it.
Okay. So we move. And then we turn on the preheater. And turn off the thermal coupler. That's what it looks like. Almost cool down. And there you go. Quick and simple. So now we take the flux and we're simply applying it onto the chip. Just wait for that to hot tub. And that's all. Hope y'all can see it. Just gonna apply a little bit of liquid lead free lead salt on this. So on the heater. That's how you. That's how you actually clean it. You know. Um, let me just get the soldering rig now. Um, let's get busy. So we we'll take the MG Chemicals Super Wick. And it's a simple process where you can't apply too much heat on the soda pan because you could end up burning it really badly. So. You don't want to apply too much pressure on the thermal pads as well. Sorry, on the sort of pads because you could damage it. You could bridge points, whatnot. So, you have to be very, very cautious of how you're doing this type of work on BGAs. I removed it, clean it up. Now, that's how it looks after it's cleaned up. So, now, um, part two, I'll do how the chill, we'll do the chip, and we'll put it on. It's a dummy, tr it's just dummy drive, um, dummy Xbox, so I don't really give two shits about it, but I'll show you how it actually works. So, this one from Cyborg speaking, get ready for part two.